Hi, and thanks for joining me again today for another Devotion Time. It is the 5th of May, 2018, and today we're talking about how to make a comeback. And as we finish reading the book of Judges throughout journey into the New Testament, we start in the book of Ruth. So today's reading is taken from Judges 21 and Ruth chapter 1. Well, don't you love a good comeback story? Don't you love it when the underdog rises up and wins? It does our heart good to see someone come back after being knocked down after the tragedies of life. And that's the story which we find as we read through the book of Ruth. The story of Ruth begins with her as a young woman. Her life seems to hold such a bright future for her. She marries a husband with strong family ties. Then they start to build their life demolished by the tragedy of death. Ruth's husband, her father-in-law and brother-in-law all die. Ruth has no blood relation left to start over again. And the story of Ruth contains at least three powerful principles we can learn about how to start over when we just don't feel like it. Number one, find someone else who is hurting and be a friend to him or her. Now underneath the surface of this story, there is a motivation for Ruth staying with her mother-in-law. And I think this may be the first clue. God uses and blesses people who don't get so wrapped up in themselves all of the time. And the interesting thing is that when we help ourselves out of trouble, when we decide to help others also out of trouble, God wants us to be like him, always giving, unselfishly, ministering to the needs of others. Number two, since you're going to have to take risks in life, take some for God. Now some of us are great risk takers, but others... Well, others seem to stay back a little bit. But even a turtle has to stick out his neck some time to get anywhere in life. And since we're forced to make some calculated risks in life, why not take them for the one, for God, who has done so much for us? You see, Ruth risked following Naomi back to the land of her God, but it paid great dividends for her. And one thing we can see through Scripture time after time again is when we decide to step out in faith to follow God, leaving our all behind and following him, well, it's always beneficial. It's always beneficial to follow God in his plans. It's always going to do good for us. And then, thirdly, we should expect great things from God. You no, know, Ruth, this woman, who her life seemed to start out with so much strategy, became the great grandmother of King David. And how did this happen? Well, someone in Ruth's family decreased husband family at to buy her back. We see this word in the story of Ruth to redeem. It's a right of a land that belonged to him. It's called a Kingsman Redeemer, as they were called. And this is Boaz. Boaz was Ruth's Kingsman Redeemer. But don't misunderstand this. This wasn't a business deal happening here. It was a love story. Boaz didn't want the land that belonged to Ruth. He wanted Ruth's hand in marriage. He had fallen in love with her. He'd watched her commitment to her mother-in-law. He'd seen her gleaning in the fields of barley. Who would ever have dreamed that this outsider, a Moabite woman, would have ended up being a great-grandmother of King David, and not only that, but in the very lineage, the family tree of Jesus himself. Well, God did. It was his plan. Now, God knew you before you were born. He knew what's going on in your life right now, the good things and the difficult things. But you can expect great things from him if we step out with faith and follow him just like Ruth did. Now we can expect great things from him because he always looks after us, but we should also be looking after the needs of others, just like Ruth. And you know what else? When Ruth needed the Kingsman Redeemer, well, he provided Boaz. But for us, to redeem us, he gave his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to become our Redeemer. Let's reflect on today's devotion. I want you to think about... How can you look past your needs that you're facing at this moment and see the needs of other people in your family, in your social circle, in your community? And how can you actually take a step today to meet those needs? And then secondly, what are your expectations of God? Do you expect him to not to do too much? Do you limit him or do you expect him to do amazing, great things amongst us? Well, let's pray. Oh, Father, I just thank you so much as we see in the story of Ruth today, as we see her, her life falling apart with her um, family, tragically affected by death. Lord, we realize that when we're in a bad place, when we're in a dark place, when we're in a hurting place, that you do not forsake us, but you are very much there with us, aiding us and assisting us, providing a plan and a purpose for us. 
Lord, we thank you then for the transformation which happened in the story of Ruth. And Lord, we just pray that the next days we look at Ruth a bit further, that you just keep speaking to us through this story. Father, we thank you for the kingsman redeemer that we've seen in Boaz. Father, we thank you that when we needed to be redeemed, that Jesus came to redeem us, bring us back into the family. Father, I realize so much that you bless us in so many ways each and every day. Allow us also to see the needs of those around us and not only to see them, but to do something about them, to help in the ways which we can. Father, I just thank you so much for your grace for us today. Help us to be bright, shining lights for you, that people will see your glory and love through our actions this day, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.